Imagine these are the Hong Kong people. Okay, we need more. Imagine these are the Hong Kong people living in a very tiny flat. Okay, let's make it more tiny. See, the pressure go up. Hiya, so much pressure. Hi, let's look into the relationship between the air pressure and volume. Why do you dress like that? I'll tell you later, okay? Okay, so follow me, go and open the simulation link and you should be able to see this. So now click into it and it will load you the simulation simply. After that, you should see there are four tabs in total. Just go for the first one called ideal because it's called ideal guess. Um, you don't have to understand this yet. We'll explain more when you get into IB physics. So this is a simulation itself and wait wait a second why they don't look the same strange okay never mind i think they have just updated the simulation so that it become better and giving you more function i guess so here you just have to observe how the volume change would affect the pressure so uh, follow me up here so what you can do is you can Again, add some gas. These are gas particle, okay? Although the analogy that I gave was kind of valid, right? Imagine these are just people, right? And they, they, they have to live in this space and they somehow want to have social distancing. Um, and that is the idea of diffusion if you have learned it in chemistry or biology. Uh, but that's the other issue, right? So normally, eventually, they will reach an equilibrium and they will kind of spread out equally in general and um, here what you can do is you can enable the width and so this is something that you can adjust so that you can change the volume okay so right now I want you to look at the pressure gauge and by the way you can also change it to k pascal I think that will be even better change it to k pascal and also try to change the volume and look at how that will affect the pressure Pause the video and try it yourself. A few moments later. Okay, so what you should find in general should be when you decrease the volume, the pressure will increase, while when you increase the volume, the pressure would decrease. So this is something that you can try. Um, if you try to move along this and change it gradually, it will always be true. So let's put it down first. Okay, done. However, I still want you to think about the particle theory. Try to use it to explain this relationship. So pause the video again and try to do it yourself. A few moments later. Okay, the explanation is quite long and there are some terminologies that you have to use and include specifically. So I type it here because my handwriting is quite bad. Um, first of all, we can say when volume is reduced, this is uh one way that happened right when volume reduced so of course when volume increased that would be the other way around so you, you can probably just choose one of them to explain the length that each particle travel between the wall would reduce so um i think this is already the shortest already sorry uh, but then you would want to be careful that uh we care about between the wall so that is to say uh, if you look at this diagram, so this is one wall, this is another wall. Of course, there is also the wall at the side, but imagine a particle that, that just have to pass, go like this from the top and then collide and then go to the bottom. And so comparing with a, to a smaller volume, I hope you can see that the distance is getting shorter. So this is what I'm saying. The distance you have to travel between the walls is less. Number two. Since the distance is less than, therefore, the time taken would also be reduced, obviously, right? Because the speed of the particle doesn't change when the temperature is the same. So that is an, also an idea you can learn. Uh, I think in uh, the 
junior science, you have learned about the kinetic energy of the particle is related to the temperature. So just now, if you look at simulation, we didn't say the temperature will change, so the speed will always maintain the same on average. Number three, since the time is reduced and therefore there will be more collision per unit of time, or you can say simply, uh, there are more frequent collision. And because of that, uh, they would receive a greater force, more or greater impact force, because you're colliding on the wall, right? So that is an impact force on the wall. Um, we can relate this more later on in the future when we learn a topic called momentum, but then let's ignore that for now. Lastly, by the idea of pressure equal to force over area, then with this greater force, of course you have greater pressure. So uh, it will be essential to quote this equation, uh, more precisely the definition of pressure. Moving on on the note, originally I want to reserve the space here for a real practical experiment. Uh, however, I don't think we can do it now. And so let's try to convert that into a simulation. So I'll guide you through, don't worry. So first of all, it asks you to draw the self diagram. So we'll be using the one that is the simulation. Uh, so you can just take the screen capture if you want to. The next part asks you to draw the data table. Okay. <laughs> draw the data table and record down the result. So you can just follow me here, data table, and we are changing the volume and then try to find out the corresponding pressure. For the pressure, I know the unit is in K Pascal. For the volume, um, I think we don't know because it only tell us the length of the box but then we don't know the other side well wait this is rectangle this is a square right I think so okay let me use a ruler to measure it I think it is right is it oh not exactly oh disappointed Okay, never mind. I realized that even if we know the other side, we don't know the depth because it's three dimension, right? So uh, let's just do it with 10, well, the nanometer simply, but then uh, we can say it as nanometer cube. Okay, and then uh, when we try to express it, we can express it as, for example, this one as 10 times a a is like the area of the other two dimension multiplied together so uh, eventually it will become a volume uh, it will still work eventually so let's do it like this okay we can start to take the first data so the first volume is 10 nanometer times the so-called a a is being the constant of the other two dimension and so now the pressure you can see it's fluctuating is very normal because you can see the particles are moving randomly in all directions. So there is sometimes a fluctuation is, is completely normal. Um, and so I think what we have to do is try to observe the average. So you can see the minimum is about 1970 something. Highest is like two, okay, I can, I can write down. So from 1970 something to I think 2041 just now. So let's take it as 2040 roughly. So if you try to take the average between them, then that would be good enough. So uh, add them together, divided by two. So it's about, uh, how should I write? Maybe I'm not going to write it down like this, but then uh, I can say the 2040 plus 1970 divided by 2 equal to 2005. So that will be like the average reading of the pressure over a short period of time. 
Okay, so let me give you some time to take the rest of the data. So I will want you to take, well, this was 10 nanometer. I will also want you to take 8 nanometer, 6 nanometer, and I think the minimum is 5. Also, I will want you to go to the other side as well. So let's do 12 nanometer, 14 nanometer, and also 15 nanometer. Okay, I think this is quite fair. So in the total, we can have seven different sets of data. So try to pause the video, take the data yourself, and I will show you my data as well later on. A few moments later. Okay, so here is my data. Notice that it might be slightly different from yours. It's perfectly fine. So now, what I want you to do is look at this data. Okay, of course, if you'd like to, you can sort them in a better order. Um, it wasn't a very good approach to do it kind of this, you know, strange order. You should do it like either ascending or descending order. So it's easier for you to observe. But anyway, so looking at this volume and pressure, other than just saying, you know, when volume increase, pressure decrease, or volume decrease, pressure increase, can you tell as a more precise relationship between them mathematically. I'll give you some time now. Try to use your math intuition. Okay, if you still haven't got any idea, but you still want to guess, you can pause the video now. Okay, so if not, I'm going to tell you uh, what you could explore. So what you can do is, in fact, try to multiply them, V times the pressure, or I mean more precisely, P times V will be the one that we would phrase it usually you should find out that the value is always constant Nani? so let me show you um, the value okay so for the first one when you multiply them you got 20050 zero, zero, zero. the next one when you multiply them you got 20000 zero, 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 zero. very close enough the next one, when you multiply them, you got 19920. Next one, well, obviously 20,000. Next one, 19800. Zero, zero. Another one, also 19880. Last one, 19500. Zero, zero. So C is very constant enough and therefore in this case you can establish a mathematical relationship that is p times v equals to a constant okay more commonly in physics we'll be using this equation as p1 times v1 equals to p2 times v2 1 and 2 is re are referring to the time uh, that is at a time one or time two so it could be uh, for a syringe for the air that is that is going to be compressed inside uh, before you push it or after you push it for one and two respectively and they should be a constant and therefore they should equal to each other lastly I would like to give you one more question and that is if we try to plot these data on a graph how should it look like so let me give you the axis. The axis, uh, since we do volume to be independent variable, so we put it on x, and pressure is the dependent variable, so it will put it on y axis. So try to sketch the outline, the line of best fit of the relationship.
try it yourself and pause the video. A few moments later. Okay, there are two approaches you can use. The first approach you need to be a little bit good at maths, and that is knowing how to rearrange the equation. So using the equation that we have mentioned, then you should know that P equals to constant let's call it K over V. And so if you look at the X and Y axis, which is P and V respectively, then you will find out this is an inverse proportion function. And if you don't know how it looks like, Google it. All right, so this is how it looks like. So that means the answer should be something like a curve like this one. Okay, remember this is not going to be a straight line like this, right? It won't be correct. It will be a curve like this one. Approach number two. You can make use of the technology, a pretty old technology, however, that is the spreadsheets or the Microsoft Excel. So what you can do is to input all this data uh, into the spreadsheet and you should be able to find out the graph when you plot it. So let me try it. And I think this is a very important skill that you should also no as well so learn from me and you can also try it to do it yourself because that will be beneficial to know when you get into the IB as well so here is the data uh, I tried to do it with the minimal minimal effort so I ignore the unit those things uh, forgive me for that and I'm not I'm going to plot the graph now so you can see here uh, this is the data point and you can see obviously they look like a curve and I can also choose the mathematical model it's not going to be linear uh, it should be something like a power equation like this okay so you can see y is proportional to x nearly negative 1 so exactly like what we said all right earlier that for p i mean if you look at this one this actually means p equals to k times v negative one so you can simply substitute the x and y into what is shown here amazing so in this video you learn about the relationship between the volume and the air pressure and the equation is PV equals to PV, 1, 1, 2, 2. And in fact, the name of this relationship is called Boyle's Law. Boy is just the name of the scientist who first discovered this. Other than that, you should also know how to explain the whole idea using the particle theory. And lastly, you also learn some practical skills on putting down this in an organized way with all the data that you have collected also how to deal with the data which may have fluctuation the pressure itself and also how to make use of the technology i hope you enjoy learning physics with me if you do so please hit the like button and as well as always thanks for watching